Hi, all. This is Mr. Yeager for Honors Chem. Um, we are looking at predicting products. Okay, predicting products this time. So with predicting products, um, we kind of just put some of the pieces that we've already done together in terms of identifying the type of reaction, balance the reaction, but this does now bring much more back in that we can write out the correct chemical compounds. I shouldn't say bring back in, we're doing that already. So we have to be able to make those compounds. <laughs> Excuse me, sneeze there. So how do we do this? All I'm gonna show is just how to do it and then we'll show a couple and that'll be it for today. So with predicting products procedure, um, you gotta identify the type of reaction that will occur first, okay? That's really the kind of key to this. That's why you need to know your five different types of reactions. Synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. All right? Because again, each one, like you saw in the other video, has a particular method of what happens between reactants to products. Okay? Synthesis is A plus B forms AB. You know, single displacement is AX plus B forms BX plus A, or AB plus X, depending on whether it's a halogen or metal etc etc okay so you need to identify the type of reaction and then move the atoms over based on that type of reaction so we're going to move all that stuff over to the other side okay we move the atoms over if it's a polyatomic ion i bring the polyatomic ion over again you'll see this in just a moment when we do a couple examples the big th mistake that I run into already right here is people will move the subscripts. We do not move the subscripts unless it's part of the polyatomic ion. What we have to do after we move the atoms over is we have to now balance the charges for ionic compounds. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Like I said, most of this will be ionic compounds. If it's not, it could be a diatomic molecule. It could be water, which we know that. It could be carbon dioxide, okay? It'll be probably fairly simple compounds, covalent compounds that we know. I think, again, on this part, people mess up. They just bring the elements over, and they don't actually then create the correct compounds. So, like, I brought the elements over. Isn't that the compound? It's not if the charges aren't balanced. So you got to balance the charges. After you do that, you balance the reaction, and you're all done, okay? That's all there is, okay? That's all, that, like I said, it's a pretty short little lesson there, okay? So let's go ahead and just jump straight into some examples, okay? Some examples with this. So you get a problem like this, water decomposes. I mean, this one's kind of giving it away. It's gonna be a decomposition, all right? So you start off with water, H2O, and for decomposition reactions, we are only doing ones with decomposition where the elements just split apart. So again, what two elements do I bring? I mean, I'm gonna do this piece by piece. Some of you will obviously be like, well, it should be blank and blank and be good to go. But it's the idea for a decomposition, we're gonna form A plus B. Well, what are the two elements? Hydrogen and oxygen. I do not bring that subscript over. If it happens to be the same subscript, so what? Yay, that's amazing. But we don't know that for sure. Like that's the idea, is that subscript doesn't travel to the other side. In the end, hydrogen is a diatomic, so it will be H2. It's not two because this one's two, okay? It is two because when it's by itself, it's diatomic. Oxygen likes to be O2. There you go, you have now predicted the products. Last step, and you've written the right formulas. Now we just got a balance. So two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one oxygen, two oxygens. I need to put a two out front here. Now oxygens are balanced, but now I have four hydrogens. So I need to put a two over to the other side. There's my balanced reaction. Okay. Let's just do one more decomposition just to make that clear. Again, I feel like decompositions now are going to be pretty straightforward. You kind of just have to recognize if it's a diatomic involved. All right. We will not do decomposition where it decomposes into a smaller compound unless it specifically says that to you, okay? Which that wouldn't then be, sorry, that wouldn't even be a predicting product. That would be just writing out the reaction. So we got mercury two oxide. So mercury two oxide plus two minus two. So this is HGO. This is gonna split up into HG, mercury, and O. HG is a metal. No metals are ever diatomic. So that's just HG. Oxygen is going to be O2. All right. One HG, one HG, one O, two O's. Need to put a two back in front of here. Now I have two HG's, two HG's. Okay. 
So that's decomposition. Let's find some other ones here. I think it's a lot of decomposition here. Do, 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 do. There we go. Potassium and chlorine combined. All right. And I'll tell you, you're not always going to have the problems where it's right, written out for you. It might just say K plus Cl2. Well, right there we should also notice there's two lone elements. It's going to combine. This is a synthesis reaction. So A plus B is going to form AB. So let's just bring the two elements over and combine them. K, C, L. Now I'm not saying that's the correct formula yet. We have to double check it. Okay, but I definitely don't bring this two over. I just bring K and C, L over. Well, K is plus one and C, L is minus one. So guess what? That is the correct formula. Again, you can't make that assumption um, until we actually look at the charge. But now that I have everything organized, I have my correct predicted product, I can balance. 1K, 1K, 2CLs, 1CL, 2 there. Now I have 2K, so put 2 back over there. All right? And you might be surprised. Like, the balancing part of this might be really simple because we might have some easier compounds we're working with because we're getting through the more difficult part of predicting what there might be. Okay? I'm not going to do another synthesis, but you see how that's done. Uh, let's find a different type here. Here we go. Methane, which is carbon tetrahydride and oxygen combined. Okay? So I have CH4 and oxygen is O2. Well, this is the one ding, ding, ding that's like the unique, its own kind of reaction. This is a combustion. In a combustion, the products are always CO2 plus H2O. It doesn't matter which one you put first, as long as those two are on that side. All right? So that's a combustion reaction. Combustion should be easy to predict the products. How do I know it's combustion? Hydrocarbon and oxygen. That is a combustion reaction. All right. We are only doing combustion when it's a hydrocarbon and oxygen. If it was like sulfur and oxygen, we would call this a synthesis reaction. Okay. In some way. All right. Depending on how that forms together. Okay. So. Got to balance it. We actually balanced this one in, I think, like one of the other videos. 1C, 1C, 4Hs, 2Hs, so 2 there. I have 2 O's right here, 2 O's right there, so this has to be a 2. Okay? But that's a combustion. So again, combustion should be obvious with what the products are, CO2 and um, H2O. Here's just another example. Tetracarbon decrohydride, carbon hydrogen, hydrocarbon plus oxygen. All right? Uh, how about this guy? Lead to nitrate and potassium sulfide react. All right. So lead to means it's. Oh, sorry. I'm going to put it down there. Plus two and minus one. And so that's PBNO32. NO3 being nitrate, lead being PB. Plus potassium sulfide, plus one, minus two. So this will be K2S. All right, what type of reaction do I see happening here? I have two compounds, so AX plus BY. What's the only type of reaction that's AX plus BY? Double replacement. So that would be AY plus BX. So I alternate, so A would be PB and S. I'm just bringing the elements over. I'm gonna, you're gonna see I'm not gonna bring any subscripts. This is K and this is NO3. Now the crazy thing on this one, all the charges stay the same. So this is plus 2, minus 2. This is plus 1, minus 1. Okay, all the charges remain the same. We'll talk about that type of reaction later where the charges might actually change. All right, but at least when we're doing predicting products, products problems, we don't change the charges. So the nice thing is all the elements are correctly balanced uh, with each other to create the correct compounds. And then I have PB, 1 PB two NO3s, one NO3, so I need to put a two there. Two Ks, two Ks now, good. One S, one S. All good, so there's your double replacement. All right, let's find that single replacement. Okay, that's another double replacement. There we go. Nope, that's another double replacement. Aluminum and zinc chloride are combined. So, aluminum, is aluminum diatomic? No, plus zinc chloride. Zinc is plus 2, chloride is minus 1, so it's ZnCl2. Produces. This is a single replacement. A, B, X. 
Aluminum's a metal, it's going to replace the other metal and kick it out. So this should be Zn. Is Zn diatomic? No. Plus AlCl. The thing is, that's not the correct formula. Al's plus 3, Cl's minus 1, so I need 3 Cl's there. So now I have the balanced ionic equation. Ionic equation, sorry, ionic formula. And then we balance. 1 Al, 1 Al, 1 Zn, 1 Zn. Oh, this is going to be easy. 2 Cl's, 3 Cl's. Darn. Okay. As you probably have practiced quite a bit, 2 and 3 we raise to 6. So I'm going to put 3 right there and 2 right here. And then I have to go back because now I have 1 Al and 2 Al, so that's 2. I have 3 Zn's and 1, so that's 3. And there you go. All right. So that's the process. That's the process for predicting products. Identify the type of reaction, move the elements on over based on the type of reaction involved, balance the charges to write the correct formulas or recognize diatomics, and then finally balance the overall equation. All right, so that's what we're looking for. Have a good one.